Let's get right to it. It's all about Hurricane Dorian. We're taking a live look right now at the radar. This storm is still a strong category two hurricane. Now you can see it's turning off the South Carolina coast, picking up speed and it is moving northeast. Let's go to live pictures right now in Myrtle Beach. You can see rough seas there, strong winds, rain falling as well. The camera being tossed around a bit as well. And take a look at this video. Dorian spawns a tornado along North Carolina's coast. This twister was seen from a fire station in Pender County this morning, which is just north of Wilmington. North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper just spoke, telling North Carolina families to stay vigilant and weather aware. The message this morning is this. Get to safety and stay there. Don't let your guard down. We have live team coverage at noon right now. So let's start with Larry Sprinkle. He's over the First Warm Storage Center. And Larry, I know there's a, a lot to sort of unpack here, but we're also talking about possible tornadoes in addition to this leading up to the hurricane. I know you. when you hear about hurricane, you think, oh gosh, winds 110 miles per hour. But quite often within hurricanes, which is a whole series of thunderstorms, thunderstorms help to create tornadoes. You get these spin up tornadoes. They're not big, but there have been a lot, quite a few sightings today. And we continue to see the heavy rain pounding the coastline around Charleston, especially up in the Tar Heel State, up around the Wilmington area right now. Very heavy rain, big thunderstorms uh, up towards Burgaw there along Interstate 40, going back westbound. You can see all the way over towards uh, areas around Carvers, all the way to uh, Surf City. Some very heavy rain, thunderstorms, and the potential once again for severe weather spawning tornadoes. You can see the center of circulation pretty close to Charleston, South Carolina, and nothing to the Charlotte metro area, but notice we have a few showers from Lancaster all the way to Chirac. That's some light rain showers over here, as you can see, over towards New Hanover, Pender County, around the Wilmington area. A tornado warning in effect until 12:30. Another tornado sighting right over there, and there'll be more of those throughout the day today. The very latest wind sustained 115 miles per hour. Now back up to Category 3 hurricane. It's about 45 miles east southeast of Charleston, South Carolina. Once again, moving north northeast at about eight miles per hour almost on a beeline for maybe the south facing beaches of North Carolina. Could we see landfall there? And what about the effects in the Charlotte area with those high winds close by? We'll check all that coming up in just a few minutes. Larry, thank you. Still a massive storm. We've been talking about the yeah. impacts along the Carolina coast all morning. And take a look at some new video. This is in from overnight. You can see heavy winds and rain from the storm there. It's expected to bring severe flooding to much of the coastal part of the Carolinas. So that's where we find NBC Charlotte's Chris Mulcahy, our meteorologist. You've been live in Charleston since early, early this morning, Chris. Yeah, Chris, we've been talking to you for the better part of the past seven hours or so. What are things different right now at noon as opposed opposed to when we first spoke to you at five this morning. Well, if I seem a little distracted, it's just because a big piece of something came off the roof. And as I did here at our hotel, they were in the process of finishing up their roof. So it looks like a big chunk of tarp paper and also a little bit of scalping just came off the roof as we started this live shot. And speaking of that, I first joined you at 5 a.m. We had tropical storm force winds where I'm standing at that point. Now they've gotten a little bit stronger, sustained at 40. That's lower end tropical storm strength, but they're gusting over 60. That's the upper Think about it in Charlotte when we have a severe thunderstorm warning. Those for wind gusts up to 58 miles per hour during a three second time frame. Well, first off, they're lasting a lot longer than that. And on top of that, they're a lot more frequent and they've continued for hours. Multiple reports of trees down. One roof was actually blown off of a church in James Island. Also, down power lines where over 200,000 people are without power across the Charleston area along the South Carolina coast. The rain has been relentless. It hasn't stopped, and we're heading towards high tide. Yes, it does look like the storm surge is going to be a little bit less than predicted earlier this morning, but it's still going to be significant. Yes, Charleston does flood, but with the combination of this rain and wind, this is still a serious situation where I'm standing here in Charleston and the South Carolina shoreline. Reporting here in Charleston, I'm meteorologist Chris Mulcahy. All right, Chris, be sure to be sure, uh, safe, both you and your photographer, Mike Hansen. All right, that's the situation down in South Carolina. Let's talk about North Carolina right now. Even the storm, even though it's off the coast of South Carolina and Charleston right now, we are talking about major impacts 
already happening before it even hits the target. I've seen so many videos of tornadoes touching down a lot of the damage. I know NBC Charlotte Savannah Levins. She's joining us live in Wilmington and Savannah. She's actually not far from Brunswick County, which is one of the areas that's now under a curfew right at noon, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Southport actually just initiated that noon curfew. And you know, you talk about this damage happening before Dorian even really gets here. We're still several hours out from what we expect to be the main impacts of Dorian. And yet we're already having some of these issues. In fact, I just got an emergency alert on my phone, a flash flood warning for this area, avoid flooded areas. And I think we have some video of a one of those spotted tornadoes that was over in Pender County by uh, one of the fire departments there. If we could pull that up, you can take a look just at some of that uh, videos, <laughs> I have this alert buzzing in my ear right now, but you can see uh, that tornado a bit and just kind of what that looked like. And I believe we also have some video uh, of damage that it did to one local neighborhood. It's called the farm neighborhood, uh, also in Brunswick County. I think you guys have that video on your screen right now. Just really crazy to see the damage that that reported tornado did in such a short amount of time. And then of course you feel for those folks because you know, this has happened to their homes before the effects of Dorian have even really gotten here and they just don't have the time to make the appropriate fixes that they need to do before we start feeling these weather impacts, which, you know, you just really feel for those folks. I'm also getting reports that some flash flooding has already happened up to seven inches already, and that's just the little bit of rain that we've gotten this morning. As you mentioned, lots of local counties putting in curfews as well. The Southport noon curfews, the earliest I'm seeing most going uh, into effect around 7, 8 p.m. tonight. I also just confirmed about five minutes minutes ago with the local NBC affiliate here in Wilmington WECT that they have just confirmed one uh, injury related to these reported tornadoes. It was a man who was in his home uh, and a window blew out and he flew across the room, broke his wrist. Thankfully, he is expected to be OK, what I'm hearing, but definitely just not what you want to hear before we even start to see the major impacts from Dorian. Guys, of course, I'm going to keep an eye on things. I'll keep you updated for now. I'm reporting live in Wilmington, Savannah Levins, NBC Charlotte. Savannah, thank you. The videos on so Social media have been trending all afternoon. North Carolina Emergency Management just tweeting this video of all of the damage in Emerald Isle where a reported tornado touched down. I mean, look at this neighborhood. You can imagine that there were injuries reported. I mean, look at these houses that are completely destroyed if people didn't evacuate and they were there. More pictures here, as you can see kind of overhead, it looks like it may have been a trailer park of some sorts. And this video that was tagged uh, by with Brad in it saying, you could see that pop of light there that a tornado possibly took out power that was in the Emerald Isle area. Check out this video along the coast of the beach in Myrtle Beach, a Jeep is on the beach there. People standing on the beach as well. Maybe not a smart idea as we continue to track this storm here. A lot of damage, a tree completely uprooted. Now moving to North Myrtle Beach. This video was posted on social media. It's been picked up by national networks of a reported tornado in the distance there. That was as somebody was driving to check out one of their stores. And then this video of a water spout tornado, something you don't typically see. This is just east of Ocean Isle. So as we're moving along the Carolina coast, we talked about the tornado moving past the fire station in Pender County. North, um, National Weather Service in Wilmington tweeting that. And then the floods, of course, and the storm surge, another factor that we're closely monitoring. This is right in downtown Charleston. We do know they're prone to flooding, but people were kayaking through Ashley Avenue and King Street here, some of the main blocks and strips right in Charleston that we know we have a reporter near as well covering the very latest. Ben. And the crazy thing about this is, is this storm is a few miles east of Charleston right now, north northeast of Charleston right now. So the damage we're seeing here in North Carolina is ahead of the actual storm. So who knows what we're going to be looking at, say, 12, 24 hours from now. Yeah.